Another builder on the brink of collapse. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because it looks like the construction apocalypse has not come to an end. And there's fears another builder in Victoria, well, may collapse next. So let's look at this article written by Alex turner Cole from news.com.au. Fears Victorian construction company Snowden Developments may collapse next. Now, this is the thing you've got to understand. The rumours, when they, particularly when they come out in the news, may be, the, may be enough to tip them over. Okay? Customers and creditors are worried another construction firm is about to collapse, leaving them millions out of pocket. Now, I want to remind everyone of our very own government coming to the rescue. They kept zombie companies alive, everyone. They changed the trading while insolvent rules. Okay? You've had JobKeeper. So many people were completely dependent on this. There were businesses getting it that didn't need it too. So that's the way it is. And you can't blame them. If your competitor gets it, you have to get it or else you're at a disadvantage. That's what it is in a socialist country, guys. So the RBA cash rate has been, well, ludicrously low. 3% used to be emergency. You've got home builder juicing up the market. And we're still seeing the consequences of that due to supply issues. You've got the government loan guarantees of 5 and 2%. You've got first home buyer grants. Now, now we have shared equity popping up everywhere. I just did a video about it in New South Wales. It's in Tasmania. It's a federal thing. That's Australia, guys. Okay? So the government intervened in the market significantly. And that's what they do here. That's what they do in Australia. We're not a free market. Don't kid yourself. When all your, you know, your lefty, stupid friends are blaming capitalism for the fact that they're lazy and haven't achieved bugger all in life, no, no, that's not the reason, guys. That's not the reason. So let's have a look. So customers and creditors are concerned a Victorian construction company might be about to collapse after it racked up millions in debt and building works have stalled for months. Oh no, Snowden Development has fifteen creditors chasing it for a total for debts totaling $2.5 million, who are demanding the Supreme Court of Victoria impose a winding-up order to force the company to go into liquidation on the grounds of insolvency. One of the creditors is the Office of State Revenue for 262000 and the largest amount owing is for a roofing company waiting on a 936000 payment. Now, that's, that's nearly a million bucks. Depending on the size of the company, that could take them under. Legal action was first taken against the construction company on the 1st of April. The next court appearance is on July 13th. Several Snowden customers are demanding answers after their phone calls have gone unanswered. They were left waiting at mediation meetings and their plots of land remain empty years after signing the building contract. One Melbourne customer, Subra Matal, claims he could be financially ruined because of the company's long delays. He's missed out on a government grant as construction hasn't started and has also been paying both mortgage and rent with no end in sight. They have screwed me in all ways. I'm crying day and night. Mr. Mattel, 40, told news.com.au. I mean, that's, that, that sucks. It really does. You know, It's one advantage to being owner builder. All the delays, kind of my fault to deal with. <laughs> all the weather. So... It comes as Australia's building industry is in crisis, with about a dozen companies going into liquidation so far this year amid rising costs for construction materials and the ongoing supply chain crisis putting many out of business. Mr. Mattel saved hard for six years working in customer service jobs for below average wages and finally thought he'd have a chance to own a home. There you go, you can do it. In October 2020, he signed a home and land package in Taranet, Western Melbourne, with a developer called Vest Build. The land was settled in May 2021 and the developer opted to go with Snowden as their builder. The Aussie citizen paid $11,000 deposit for a 222000 single-story home meant to be built by November this year. In January, his building permit came through. Each week I went to site with excitement. They cleared the plot. They put up uh, out on, on the block, he said, then nothing. According to the contract he signed with Snowden, the base should have been completed in April and the frame in May. However, the site remains empty. To make matters worse, 
Mr. Mattal is now no longer eligible for the $25,000 home builder government grant he planned to use to pay for part of the project. And, well, construction costs have gone up as well, so if he goes to a new builder, it may even be worse. To meet the criteria for the grant, building had to begin on site within 18 months of entering into the home builder contract, which would have been the end of May at the latest. He factored the twenty-five grand into his property purchase, and without it, he is unsure if he would be able to cough up the funds needed to complete the build. Well, mate, you've got to reduce the scope. You've got to reduce the scope of your build. Find ways to squeeze twenty-five grand out of it. For years and years, I saved this money, and now I'm at a big zero. So, he was frantically calling his developer and builder before the May thirty deadline knowing his home builder grant would soon expire if construction hasn't started. He says it was passed around like a football between West Build and Snowden, with each laying the blame on the other. His emails and phone calls to Snowden were mostly unanswered, while West Build said it was an issue for Snowden to deal with. Well, yeah, it's the builder's problem. Whenever he did manage to get through to Snowden, they said West Build had instructed them not to speak to clients, and that he should take it up with the developer. It was at this point. Well, who's his contract with? Who's his contract with? Who is he playing, paying progress payments to? Ah, oh, this is a mess. It was this point if he wondered if Snowden was in strife and contacted the Domestic Building Dispute Resolution for help. A representative arranged a mediation meeting between him and the owner of Snowden. However, last Tuesday at 10 a.m., Mr. Sander never showed up and left Mr. Whittle waiting. Later that day, his developer told him that Snowden is unable to complete the job, but no further details were given. The new build will cost an additional twenty-five grand. That's that's not as bad as I would have thought. Maybe, maybe prices are starting to cool down a bit. I don't know where to go. What does that mean? Have they cancelled my contract? If they go bankrupt, will I get nothing? If Snowden doesn't have my deposit money, then who does, Mr. Middle said. Mr. Middle considered hiring a lawyer, but their hourly rates were too much for him. He also said he can't afford to take the Victorian Civil Administrative Tribunal as it costs several hundred dollars, money he doesn't have. This guy sounds like he doesn't have any... any... uh, oh, well, uh, contingency. He doesn't have any contingency for a build. What if it runs over? He's, he's screwed. He's too close to the wire. Is this, this the mess that we're going to get into, guys? When contacted, West Build hung up on news.com.au then had their receptionist inform us they would not provide a comment. It's not just Mr. Middle. Other Snowden customers have voiced concerns as their building sites languish half-finished or not touched at all. Ben Kanenko, 36, and his fiancée, Steph, 32, bought land at Thornhill Park in Melbourne in October 2020, with Snowden contracted as the builder and West Build as their developer but they are still yet to see any construction work underway. They forked out twelve grand in a deposit, with the total build meant to cost 244000 About two months ago, we were contacted by a buyer's agent stating that they had lost confidence in the builder. They told news.com.au. The couple decided they want to end the contract, but were dismayed to find radio silence from Snowden. It feels like we're a hostage, he added. We're just sitting on this land. We're happy to mutually end the contract and move on, but Snowden, we're ignoring our phone calls. We can't actually do anything. I mean, this is the thing. I understand why people want to go to developers for house and land packages, but you'd almost want to buy the land, get the title transferred to you, bugger off the land developer, and engage your own builder separately. So you're dealing with them. With their frustrations mounting, the pair marched into Snowden's office in Kilroy Park, but staff refused to speak to them. I asked to speak to someone. They pulled up my contract, and they said they'd been advised by Westbuild not to engage with clients. We have spent four to five grand in legal fees. We're still not getting any response, even with, after a few letters from our lawyers. Ah, this, this is all just a mess, isn't it? This is just, just a mess. Go own a builder, guys. Get the land off them and build it yourself. Seriously. Just or you just get a little kit home. Get a little kit home. If the councils probably won't allow you to do it. You know? Then there's Josh Carmi and his wife, age 29, who also missed out on a government grant and are still sitting on an empty block of land next to Snowden. 
The couple so far had shelled out a $10,500 deposit for their three-bedroom house in Tarnet. These deposits are also small, I guess, for just the, the contract the start. Um, they're worried what will happen to their cash if Snowden goes into liquidation. Ten and a half grand is a big chunk of money. We're going to lose the 15,000 15, government grants, so it's a big chunk of money to lose, he told news.com.au. Yeah, well, th- this is... This is the government overheating the whole bloody sector, guys. We can't, we can't forget that. We cannot forget that when we're hearing this. It's, it all comes back. Sure, you can blame the developers, blame the builders. It all comes back to the government stepping in and using housing, using construction as their economic stimulus tool. It's both sides now. COVID has been blamed for a lot of things. Their whole office has had COVID five times, even though they've been working from home. He added sarcastically, well, everyone has had COVID, mate. Um, Mr. Comey uh, has connections in the construction industry, which is where he first got, grew concerned about Snowden. Then, oh, I know some people that are people who are in the building industry who are owed money from Snowden, he says. From what I've heard, a lot of site supervisors have walked out, ah, oh, crap, they're not paying. School teachers Maria Voss and Rebecca Cook are arguably in the, a worse situation because their houses are both partially built, making it harder to start from scratch with another builder. Primary school teacher Miss Voss and her husband Anthony, both aged 40, have spent more than 30000 on progress payments so far with Snowden. The land was titled in September 2021 and building was meant to commence in March 2021, but it wasn't until June that the slab was put in. Then nine, nine months later in March this year, the frame finally went up. It's either... They snowed and go broke, or they build their house. The more they delay, the more they bleed, and more we bleed, she told News.com. We're paying two mortgages. She said a dominant feature of the whole process was being asked for payment before Snowden had begun building, which made her worried about this. Oh, boy, yeah, no. Shit. That's, that's the number one warning sign right there, isn't it? Oh, it's a mess, guys. This whole thing is a mess. Miss Cook, a high school teacher, is facing similar issues, having bought her plot of land in May 2020. The 26-year-old spent 44 grand so far and was meant to move into a new home in March. However, only the slab and frame have been completed and she's still living with her parents. I want them to finish my house, she told news.com.au. The prices are skyrocketing. I don't have the funds to fork out another 50 grand for a build. Yeah, you may need to. This is the problem. You may need to to finish it off. Or you're going to have to Wait. Miss Cook is fed up with the many excuses Snowden has given her for these delays. There's always an excuse every time there's a natural disaster. They're piggybacking off that, she said. Well, I can't. it may not be an excuse. It, there's a whole lot of people in this industry that's been overheated. There have been supply issues. It's just been a nightmare. They told me last year that my timber was ordered in September. They said it's stuck at the waterfront. The waterfront doesn't have enough space to store all the timber. Um, Casa Bean Plumbing hired lawyers several months ago after Snowden did not pay 38 grand owed to them. Uh, the plumbers began winding up proceedings against Snowden, and although the construction company swiftly paid the debt, by then 14 other creditors had joined the case. Court documents showed East West Roofing applied uh, applied to appear in the hearing because they are owed what 90 sorry 936,000. Home and industry soil tests want 685000 to be paid back. For soil tests. So, 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 soil tests, like getting a, te- a soil test done on a site like this is like 500 bucks, Guys, what, what, what else are they doing? They have to be doing something else than just soil tests. You know, they'd, they'd, have to, they'd be doing civil work, wouldn't they? Or foundations. They'd have to be. You can't rack up. Shit, that's a lot of $500 soil tests. It would have to be more than that. These are big amounts. This is the problem when you have a lot of your work coming from one client or a big chunk of money coming from one client because that can sink you if they don't pay you on time. This is why you've got to diversify in construction. You're going to get a variety of clients coming in. And that, that was the challenge we always had because when we were doing the, the mining work and then when we were doing uh, retail work, you know, you'd get a whole lot of work and they just keep these clients that just keep flooding you with work. You've got to take on people to, to do it and it's all good. I'm looking at the money going, okay, yeah, 90% is coming from that one client. It's awesome, but it's also a bit concerning. 
So you've got to diversify. The Office of State Revenue is owed 600, sorry, 262. Uh, I don't care about this State Revenue Office. Tamar Cabinets wants 174,000. And the demolitions claim it's entitled to 103. Other creditors include Just Metal Roofing, Dashlands Building Centres, Waco Kiwi Form Limited, Top Cat Installations, MyTech Australia, Bingo Waste Services, Every First Homes, and On Tracks Earth Moving. With their money owed ranging from $24 to as much as $91,000. Two individuals are also owed eleven grand who joined the case. Oh, when added up, out of those creditors, Snowden owes more than $2.5 million, or creditors are claiming that Snowden owes $2.5 million, or correctly. Ah, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. However, it's understood some of the money Snowden owes creditors has already been paid off, and they were taken to court including to the State Revenue Office and Casabine Cass- Plumbing. The building firm claims other expenses can be paid after July 4th once they have sold a property. So they're, they're getting in trouble, it sounds like. Um, I mean, you have to feel sorry for them too because this is probably not a mess of their making. You know, you've got to realise what happened in Victoria, guys. How many lockdowns did they have? And that screwed up the construction industry. More than you think. However, the fact that Snowden has to sell an asset to pay back debts is cause for concern, according to an industry expert. Well, yes, but that's what you have assets for. That's why you want to go with builders that have enough assets that they can do that to dig themselves out of a mess like this and hopefully keep going. Hopefully, that's what you want. You want someone that has enough assets to to pull themselves out and to keep pushing ahead. So Association of Professional Builders co-founder Russ Stevens told news.com.au, it simply shows they don't have sufficient working capital in the building company to continue its operations. Mr. Stevens said the firm, sorry, the first step of a company collapse was when a firm lost so large an amount of money that they had negative equity. When they had more liabilities than assets, insolvency was the next stage. If the court does order Snowden to wind up its operations, Brendan Copeland of Hogan Sparrows has consented to be the liquidator. Snowden did not respond to news.com.au repeated requests for comments. I mean, yeah. The construction industry has been badly hit by collapses this year. And we're talking about, yes, so here they'll go about all, we've spoken about these ones as well, guys. ProBuild, Condev, Pivot Homes, Salida Homes. Oh. Early this year, that half of Australian building companies are on the brink of collapse as they trade insolvent. Now, this is what really got me about when the government changed the rules, guys, allowing people to trade insolvent, keeping zombie companies alive. Some people don't appreciate uh, not getting paid. <laughs> it's just, you know, you could have done the work, you could have had a good relationship, you send off the invoice, and you just don't get paid. You just got to follow it up, chase it. Suddenly communication stops, they don't want to talk to you, they string you on, it's all bullshit. And that can happen, particularly in the construction game. And this is why why you want to make sure people that are breaking the rules, people who are trading when they don't have the money to pay people, or trying to do the pay when paid bullshit, get hammered, get done. But they change the rules. They change the rules. So, um, what do we have? There are between... 10 and 12,000 residential building companies, yeah, undertaking new homes or large renovation projects. So they're worried about this. Um, when something goes wrong, domestic building dispute resolution in Victoria provides building dispute resolution without the cost and time often associated with courts and tribunals. And I've gone through a similar thing here in Queensland to you know, pay the money to get a ruling against a dodgy person that owed me money. You still need to hunt them down. You still need to get like a debt collector to go after them or a, a, uh, what is it, a bailiff to go present them with it. And you've got to realize it may not be worth it. It may not be worth it. So, well, let's have a bit of a talk about this one, guy. So, as I said, this is the continuation of the construction apocalypse we have here in Australia. We have to remember, people need to remember that a lot of this mess has been caused by an artificial overheating of the market. Look at these, all of these people here that had, what, 10 grand deposit, 15 grand deposit for these houses, maybe 20 grand. And they're all depending on this home builder grant. 
The, the one guy has no contingency. None at all. You need to have, what, 5%, 10% contingency? That should... This is what happens when housing is used to stimulate the bloody economy. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just getting, I'm getting sick of it. It, it. it feels like the same shit is happening again and again. No one's learning any lessons. Everyone's just going, oh, yeah, we need more government intervention. Give me, give me the handouts. You know, do this shit, do that. No one worries about the consequences. You tell me what you reckon, guys. It's just getting frustrating. I feel sorry for the people in this situation. You know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you want to financially support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Or contact us if you need any architectural services. Take care, guys. Have a great day. And I'll see you next time. Got to feel sorry for these people. Hoping to get their first home. Got in the market. Getting done.